If you're here to learn how to make a 3D Pac-Man, you are in so much luck because this is the only tutorial of this kind that exists. It has geometry nodes, it has other modifiers, it's just going to be a fun tutorial. So this is what we're going to be making, and I know it looks simple, but it's not at all. Because we need to take a sphere and somehow cut out the mouth opening and make that predictable and make it blocky. There's a lot going on here, and in fact, uh, this is going to be one of the more complicated geometry node tutorials, so buckle up, you know? New blunder scene. Open up geometry nodes, delete the default cube, and add in a cube that isn't as offensive to us, and make this a geometry nodes object. Uh, order of business. Pac-Man is a sphere with kind of like a pie slice cut out of it. We want to do that with a boolean, be able to control that pie slice, and then make this thing blocky. So starting off with the sphere body, I'm just going to do that with a UV sphere. So boom, <laughs> done. Uh, the complicated part, the, the quite complicated part, I guess, is how do we cut out the pie slice here? Well, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to make a, a mesh that we are going to boolean, and I know it's boolean, chill. Uh, we're going to boolean away, that's the new word. Um, and the question is, how do we make this slice mesh? Here's what I propose. We are going to do a mesh line, which seems like a weird move, but believe me, it's going to be correct, uh, with three points. I'm going to make one of the points this one, and then the next point's going to be this one, and the next point's going to be this one, and we're going to extrude that upwards. So I somehow need to take our mesh line, which again is just a line going vertically, and somehow turn it into this kind of angle uh, looking thing. And then we can extrude it and get rid of it. Uh, to do that, anytime we want to change the position of something, set position node, and I'm going to do this in a couple nodes to keep it simple. Uh, the first point is going to be up here. How do we do that? And we want to be able to control the angle of this, right, as it goes around the size of our pie slice. Uh, to do this, I'm first of all going to isolate the first vertex, because remember, this mesh line is composed of three points, namely these three vertices of index 0, 1, and 2. If I can isolate the index when it's equal to 0, right, uh, then we can set the position for that explicitly. So with this set position node, I'm saying only uh, deal with the first vertex, and where do we want to send it to? What position? Uh, well, it should be kind of a radial uh, angular function. So I'm going to make that function. I'm going to combine x, y, z. Uh, how do we get the x and y coordinates of this point as it goes around the circle? Because we want it to sweep up and down. Uh, well, that's exactly what the trigonometric sines and cosines are for. Uh, so let's use a cosine for the x-axis and a sine for the y-axis. If you haven't done trig, then you must be pretty young, but don't worry, just use these nodes. And uh, we can put in a single value for both of these. And you can see what this does is now we can uh, sweep around the circle uh, relative to an angle, okay? Um, the second point, if we uh, set this to be 0, 0, 0 everywhere, uh, the second point should already be in the middle, and uh, so is the third point. So. We do want the second point there because we have one, or actually index zero, but you know, one, two is already here, and then three, um, which we still need to do. And if you think about three, since we want this to open up kind of symmetrically um, about the x-axis, we just need to kind of do a inverse of what we just did. So I'm going to use another set position node. This time we care about when the index is equal to not zero. We already did that, not one. That's the middle point, but two. Index is equal to two. Make that the selection, and the position is just going to be this, uh, but the negative. Like, flip it on the x-axis, right? So make it a negative y. In other words, take this vector that we used for the first position, and we are going to multiply it by not 1, 1, 1, but negative 1 for the y-axis. And you can see this now gives us this triangle that with a single uh, number we can open and close. And you can think of this as Pac-Man's mouth opening and closing. A couple things to resolve here. If we overlay this with our sphere, you're going to see that, um, let me open and close it. It's just the size of the sphere, uh, which might be fine. I'm going to make it a bit bigger, uh, just so the boolean, boolean uh, works the way I expect it to. Uh, in other words, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to scale it by 2, let's say. So it's the same thing. It's just going to a larger radius. Okay. Uh, I want to take this and make it a thing I can cut away. So to do that, I'm going to extrude the mesh relative to its edges, uh, which is going to use the edge normal. Uh, by the way, we're extruding edges because we just have a mesh line. There's no faces, right? 
Uh, so with the edges, I want to extrude it vertically on the z-axis. So I'm going to make a vector 0, 0, 1. And you can see it's now extruding um, up and down. So the way you want to think about this is now we have this kind of two planes we can open and close. And yes, we could have done this kind of uh, with literally two grid objects and merged them together. Uh, but I think this is much cleaner and uh, doesn't involve rotation. Or at least not a transform node. Either way, uh, I'm going to make this thing a bit taller. Let's make it three units tall. And let's also transform it uh, so that it goes all the way through the sphere. Okay? And now we want to cut uh, one away from the other. So to do this, I'm going to preview our sphere. We can get rid of the annotations. And I want to cut away the thing. And this might be a bit glitchy, but in my experience, it's been okay. So we take the sphere. We're going to boolean boolean a difference away of our custom mesh. And you can see uh, it almost did the exact opposite <laughs> of what I wanted it to do, but you can see it works, right? Uh, if I take this, open it, and close it, uh, we're getting that sector. Uh, there's a name for this uh, shape. I forget what it's called. We learned it in differential geometry. It's called like a lotus or something like that. Either way, uh, you can see it's working. Um, you could try messing with these settings. I don't think they're going to be relevant uh, for this. Uh, so to flip uh, this, all we need to do is switch index 2 and 0 so that they're the other orientation. And now, if we look uh, from the z-axis, we have a Pac-Man. Just like that. And you could kind of stop it there, uh, but I want to automate the mouth opening and closing. So remember this value node, by the way, we should save. I'm going to call this available on Patreon, link in the description. And I'll talk about that more later. Uh, but remember, this is the only thing that matters. And we want it to go from zero or like 0.1-ish to like 0.8-ish, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, let's automate that. So I want this to be opening with respect to, I don't know why I'd put a cone there, with respect to time. Does it not like that? Do I have to type in scene time? Do I have to type in seconds? I have no idea why it doesn't like that. Scene time node, I haven't had that happen before. Uh, but you can see now if we play the animation, it opens up, you know, over time. Uh, we want it to open and close though, uh, relative to our function that we're gonna make. So first of all, I'm gonna send it through a cosine. Uh, which kind of does a weird thing because it goes from negative 1 to 1. So when it's going into those negatives is where it's doing the weird stuff. So I'm going to take our cosine, map it from negative 1 to 1 to 0 to 1. So now we have this. It opens and closes. I just want to set it to it can only go to a minimum of 0.1 and a maximum of 0.75. So I'm saying don't open all the way, don't close all the way. And then also we want to speed up the time of this. So I'm or speed up the... Yeah, speed up the time. So I'm going to multiply it by a big number. And the speed of this is relative to, you know, whatever you think looks good. Uh, you can also try some other stuff like doing a smooth step, which will have the mouth be closed for a bit longer if you like the look of that. And also cool, you could do a stepped linear. So it looks more like video gamey. I'm going to keep it at linear. Um, okay. I'm going to take this, I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees. So now we have a Pac-Man like this. And by the way, everything, of course, as you saw, uh, all procedural. So if you want the Pac-Man to be higher res, uh, you just bump up the resolution. It's just going to be a bit slower because we're doing a live Boolean. Boolean. The joke that keeps on giving. By the way, Stranger Things Season 4 slaps so hard. And I know there's something I want to say about it. I'm not going to mention it. For those of you who know who know, I'm excited for it. Okay, that's all I'll say. But um, cool, we want to take this and make it blocky. Throw this through a remesh. So again, everything we did is a modifier. And we could then throw it through another modifier, like a remesh, set it to block. Um, I found that 4 looks good. The more you do this, the higher res it's going to be, but also kind of it looks smoother. So 4 or 5 is what you want, depending on the look you're going for. 5 has a bit more clarity as to what the shape is. Um, and that's it. I mean, you could try to do this with uh, geometry nodes to make the block modifier like you could. Um, but I think this is uh, cleaner. Um, finally, and this is kind of an important point. I wouldn't me mention this otherwise. I know the material is just yellow. So you're like, why am I explaining the material? It's nothing. Well, you're going to notice if I set a material at the end of this, and I'm setting it to a material one, and then I go to the shader editor, and I uh, use that material. Uh, you would expect that when I change this, it's going to affect it, uh, but it doesn't. 
The reason for this is because of this uh, remesh node. So what we actually have to do to apply a material, and this is the only reason I'm mentioning it, make another geometry node. So first we're doing the pi slice geometry nodes, then we're remeshing, then another geometry nodes, and what we're gonna do with this one is I'm just gonna do the set material here after the remeshing. This way, when we link them, you can see we make this yellow and it actually uh, shows up. So in case you were wondering why you couldn't set the material, that's why. And uh, you put this in your scene and you put some dots in it, Pac-Man's, you know, that's the essence of it. But I think I explained the uh, important parts. Okay, 10 minute tutorial, not too bad. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, uh, if, whether you're looking to make a 3D Pac-Man or something else, I'm actually gonna do a second tutorial with this concept. So this is a two for one uh, with the pie slice. I'll let you guess what the other one's gonna be. Um, but I hope you learned something uh, from this tutorial. I certainly did when I was uh, making it. And as always, at the end of these tutorials, I like to promote the ever living 3D printed rings that I've been working on. Just slide those right on. I have uh, four of them, uh, out of my Patreon. So uh, there's a link in the description. If you guys are interested, here's what's up. So there's 700 to 800 people that are currently on my Patreon uh, supporting this channel, Default Cube, CG Matter, all that. And here's what they are getting in return other than my gratitude. And they like these tutorials. Uh, three things. First of all, early access to tutorials. You can see this a day early, two days early, a week early sometimes. Um, I make these uh, tutorials available for patri patrons uh, first. Uh, second of all, second tier is you get uh, access to the blend file. So you could just download this Pac-Man or any tutorial I've done over the last three years that's up on Patreon. Lots of blend files, lots of project files. You can download all of those. And thirdly, uh, we have the exclusive tutorial tier, which is the highest. Uh, you get the catalog of tutorials uh, that I have recorded exclusively for patrons. There's not many. There's a, a quite a few to watch, but I try to keep everything available for free, and I can do that because of the generous patrons. So if you're interested in any of that, or you just want to support what I do here, uh, giving uh near daily at this point uh, tutorials you know how to do that link in the description uh, thank you so much and uh, if you don't want to do that liking and subscribing is a big deal so i appreciate it and i will see you on the next one